Welcome to Assist College of Arts and Commerce. This is Assist Audiopedia. Myself, Assistant Professor Sunil Shah. Today, I would be covering up the most uh, difficult and uh, uh, the uh, the topic which is uh, not understood by most of the students that is related to Employees Provident Fund Act. And the topic is Employees Deposit Linked Insurance Scheme. The students uh, being in the uh, class of first year, the topic which has been given by Bombay University is that Employees Provident Fund Act and under that that is Employees Deposit Linked Insurance Scheme is uh, quite a little bit uh, difficult or uh, because you are not aware with the day to day activities. I will try to uh, make you understand in the simplified uh, form so that it would be directly going into your brain and you can understand the concept very well. With, uh, the topic employees deposit link insurance scheme which is under the employees provident fund act which is there in the unit 3 of SAM 2 of the class called first year BMS and the, and the subject name is industrial law. Now coming to the topic called EDLI that is called employees deposit link insurance. Employees Deposit Link Insurance Scheme and it is an insurance cover provided by Employees Provident Fund Organization. So, it is a subsidiary, it is a part of Employees Provident Fund Act under which Employees Deposit Link Insurance Scheme is covered which is a subsidiary or nominee or legal hire of an active member. Please remember active member means a member who is uh, uh, giving the sub, uh, subscription or the contribution towards the, the fund that is called Provident Fund. In such a case, if he is working in continuity of different organization but is contributing to the fund, it would be called as active member. Or nominee or legal hire of an active member of EPO, EPFO that is Employees Provident Fund uh, uh, organization get a lump sum of rupees 7 lakhs in case of death of a member during the service period. So, the essential condition is that he should be active member and he should be in the continuous period and the service period of the any of the organization and there should be a debt during the course of employment then he would be eligible to get a cover of surface 7 lakhs all organization covered under the miscellaneous provision uh, provisions act 952 get enrolled with edli that means once the members start contributing to the employees provident fund act he automatically uh, starts contributing to the employees deposit link insurance scheme and he becomes an active member now, what are the objectives of EDLI that is Employees Deposit Link Insurance Scheme? It ensures that the family of the members get an financial assistance in case of death of the member where there is no exclusion of insurance scheme. So, when there, there is a death occurring during the course of employment, then you will be getting an, some amount which is nearly about rupees 7 lakhs. The second objective of EDLI that is Employees Deposit Link Insurance Scheme is that the insurance cover depends on the salary drawn in the last 12 months of the employment before the debt. So, during the appointment, during the person who has been appointed, that particular salary has been not taken into account, but the salary what he draws last is taken into consideration while going for the, the cover of rupees 7 lakhs. Coming to the main uh, contribution under Employees Provident Fund scheme, which are the three different scheme is EPF that is Employees Provident Fund. EPS Employees Provident Fund Scheme and EDLI that is Employees Deposit Link Insurance Scheme. Here in this case of EPF that is Employees Provident Fund, the contribution is 12% of the basic plus the DNS allowance. Here it should be the employees contribution that is 12% whereas in EPS Employees Pension Scheme there is no contribution and in EDLI there is no contribution from the employees. Whereas in case of employer that is 3.67 of the percentage of the basic salary has been contributed by the employers in the EPF that is employees provident fund plus DNS allowance and in case of employees pension scheme it would be 8.33 percent plus the DNS allowances and ADLI the employer has to contribute 0.5 percent subject to maximum rupees 75. So, it, uh, whatever the salary is there the maximum amount of contribution which is done by the employer into the account of EDLI is rupees 75. So, students please remember this chart very important. The employees contribution is only in the EPF, but it is not in the contribution of EPS that is employees pension scheme and it is not in the contribution of ADLI. But in case of uh, the employees, the employer has to contribute in all the three schemes that is EPF, EPS that is employees pension scheme and ADLI that is employees deposit link insurance scheme. The percentage of, of contribution is uh, depending upon the basic salary is 3.67 percent, 8.33 percent and 0.5 percent. Now coming to the features of EDLI, the insurance benefit can be availed by the family members 
of the active member in case of death or the legal heir where there is no such nomination or the nominee of the members of the particular worker or the particular person who is working in organization. EPFO that is Employees Provident Fund organization members are automatically enrolled to ADLI. As I informed in my earlier slide that once a person becomes a member of uh, Employees Provident Fund, once he starts contributing, he automatically becomes the member of ADLI. And an EPFO member is only covered by ADLI scheme as long as he is an active member of EPF. So once a person becomes uh, takes a break and he doesn't work and he starts his own startup or he uh, starts his own business and he is not a member, then he cannot be a member of ADLI. That means once a person gets a break from one of the company for at least six months and then once again he starts contributing, he becomes an active member. But he leaves an organization, then he cannot become an active member. That is the main crux of that particular ADLI scheme. His family or her heirs, whatever the person who are the legal heir or the nominee cannot claim cannot claim the particular insurance that is 7 lakhs if he leaves the service with an EPF registered company. So he should be a registered member of that particular organization that is EPFO. What are the features? There is no minimum service period for ADLI scheme. That's the best part of ADLI. That is no mini no minimum. So if a person works starts working in an organization and within seven month or eight month of this uh, job he uh, occurs he has undergone a natural death or a death due to accident still is a member legal hire or the family members or any of his dependent would be getting a cover of rupees 7 lakhs the employer has to make an ideal contribution no fees can be deducted from employee salary as i told you in this chart there is no deduction from the employee's contribution that is the best part of this particular EDLI scheme. The claim amount of EDLI is 35 times the average monthly salary in the past 12 months subject to the maximum of rupees 7 lakhs. So there are two things. If the salary is less than 35 percent, uh, 35 times or if the salary is more than uh, the maximum cover is rupees 7 lakhs. The average uh, monthly uh, salary is calculated as the basic plus DNS allowances of the employee. A bonus of rupees 1.75 lakh is also applicable under this scheme. So, additional of uh, 7 lakhs, he can uh, be eligible for bonus of rupees 1.75 lakhs. Coming to the calculation part, in most of the organization, when the HR people are working or those persons who are working, they are not aware with the day to day activities or day to day laws which are being uh, changes or the amendments are being made under the Provident Fund Act. So, the HR people or the persons who are studying law or those persons should be aware with the latest updates. So, in this case under the ADLI scheme, there was 35 times and 30 times these were the two different changes which were been made in 2021. The coming to the old part that is ADLI calculation, the insurance amount uh, that the highest of a deceased member get is calculated in 35 times of the average monthly salary drawn in the last 12 months. The maximum average monthly salary of the employee, if it is capped of rupees fifteen thousand, so thirty five times of 50, uh, so thirty five times of fifteen thousand would be coming to five point two five lakhs uh, would be the salary and a bonus amount of one point seven five, so five point two five plus one point seven five would be uh, lending him to rupees seven lakhs would be the amount which would be uh, given to the particular member of the deceased uh, to the uh, family members of the deceased employee. So, so students, if you remember, if the salary is less than that, if the total amount 35, uh, 35 times of the salary is less than 7 lakhs, then 1.75 lakhs would be added. If it is more than that, then 1.75 lakhs bonus won't be added. Coming to the procedure of claiming the ADLI, how uh, students, uh, I like to inform you the procedure of claiming of ADLI, that is employee's deposit link insurance scheme. The claim, the, the hire or the nominee has to fill up of the form that is called form I form 5IF. The other form claim has to be filed, uh, filed separately by each claimant. In case of minor claimant, if the person uh, is deceased and if the his son or uh, the daughters are minor, then the guardian has to sign on his behalf to claim that particular uh, amount. In case of more than one minor, so in case of in the in the family which is large, when there are two or three minors and the person is dead during the course of employment. Uh, then his guardian uh, that the guardian has to sign a single form has to be filled by the uh, guardian. 
DADL claim has to be submitted into regional provident fund office commissioner along with the required document of the proof that is his other card, pen card, the debt certificate and the necessary document where he was working, in which organization he was working, what was his last salary and the I card if it is being issued by the company. The claim has to be settled. Now what is the role of the EPF office? That is ADLI office, that is EPF office. He has to settle the claim within 30 days of the receipt of the particular letter and it is not liable if it is not able to settle the uh, claim within 30 days then he has to then he has to pay to the claimant that is the interest of 12 percent from the date of his dispersal so within 13 days the claim has to be settled that is 7 lakh is to be paid and if the 7 lakhs is not been paid within the 30 days then the particular claimant is entitled for 12 percent per annum as the interest rate how to claim the ideal benefits form phi if as i told you has to be filed with the insurance to get the insurance benefit after the death of the member the member should have been at the time of the claimant has been dead and the death certificate has been issued by the municipal corporation and he should be active contributor as i told you in the previous slide of the epf scheme that means he should have made some contribution to the provident fund the claim form has to be signed and certified by the employer so filling of the form and the employer has to sign it. The benefits can be claimed by the nominee of the member. In case of no nominee is been declared, the surviving members of the family will be eligible for claiming the benefits. The family under EPS scheme is defined. The family what has been defined under this scheme is spouse. If it is a male, then his wife. If it is a wife, then his husband. The male children up to the 25 years and the unmarried daughter. So in case of daughters, no such age limit has been specified under the Provident Fund Act. But in case of male, the maximum age limit which is the cap is 25 years. If there is no surviving members of that particular deceased employee, the insurance benefit can be claimed by the legal hire of the deceased member. The legal hire as per the law, he can claim that particular insurance amount. In case of employer where there is no in case of where there is no employer, the form has to be attested by one of the following officer that is the gazetted officer which is appointed by the state government or with the gazetted officer who is uh, the first class magistrate or it should be president of the village panchayat, chairman, secretary or the member of the municipal or the district local board or the postmaster or the MP or the MLA. The member of the central board taxes or the regional uh, committee of the provident fund or the bank manager are the person who can sign on that particular claim form. The form I 5F has to be filled along with the form 20 that is EPF withdrawal claim in case of deceased member and the form 10C is along with the form 10D has to be supply, uh, submitted to the Provident Fund office for all these schemes if he is eligible that is employees Provident Fund scheme, employees pension scheme and employees deposit link insurance scheme. So form 20, form 10C and form 10D are very important forms for respective uh, claiming uh, the particular amount from the insurance. Provident fund, pension and employees deposit link insurance scheme. Now what is the eligible criteria for EDLI that the member of the family members should be nominated under the EPF scheme. So when a person dies a natural debt or during the course of employment and he doesn't make any nominee then the legal hire has to be are eligible to get that particular amount but he should prove into the court of law or he should have a sufficient documentary evidence. In case of no nomination all the members of the family except the major sons married daughters with major sons and married granddaughters are not eligible to get the claim. In case of no family and no nomination then the legal are eligible or in case of the minor and if it doesn't have any major sons or major daughters then the guardian can uh, sign the form on behalf of the minor. Coming to the document which are requ required for claiming the DLI forms are debt certificate of the member who is the member of that particular organization or the factory. The guardianship certificate if the claim is filed in behalf of the minor son or the nominee or the legal heir by the person other than the natural guardian. Succession certificate in case of the claim which has been done by the legal heir. Copy of the cancel check has to be also given for giving the bank details on to under which the bank the amount has to be credited. What is the minimum benefit? The minimum guarantee of the benefit under the ADLS scheme 1926 is Rs. 2.5 lakh. If the dead member of the is remained in a continuous employment for 12 months prior to his death. 
So for a continuous period 7 lakhs, in, if it, there is a gap of 12 months, then he is eligible to claim 2.5 lakhs. The life insurance benefit provided by the EPF member is provided at no cost under the EPF and EPF scheme. How to check the ADLS scheme? So, the, uh, since we are into digital era, the persons can, without going into the product for an office, he can check the status of his ADLI, whether this amount is credited or not. First step is to go to the uh, ADLI website, check the claim status, go to the website of EPFO, that is Employees Product Fund Office, then you will find our services under the our services, click on know your claim status, then you will be directed to a window where you can see you will be asked for uh, submitting your uh, UAN number that is universal account number which should be online with permanent account number and the other card number and then the details then submit the details uh, submit the button that would be for reflecting your ADLI claim status whether it is approved or rejected. Uh, step to introduce uh, which are the steps to which are introduced under the scheme. Uh, so, uh, when your organization, when they are setting up the factory, when they are recruiting an employee, it should be placed at the where the factory managers or the HR people are having their office in that particular office, this should be particular displayed at the conspicuous place, the notice of the knowledge of the employees that you have been under the LSA scheme of, under the Leo of ADLI. So, those persons, those uh, employees who are giving the benefits to the workers of ADLI scheme, that notice has to be displayed at the appropriate or the conspicuous place in the organization. And they have to apply to the Regional Provident Fund Commissioner under Section 17, Subsection 12A of Employees Provident Fund Act and the Miscellaneous Provision Act 1952 that this particular organization are in total with this particular schemes. And also they are, uh, and they also say that whether they are exempted or not exempted from that particular ADLI scheme. The application should be accompanied by the prescribed requirement including the rules of the proposed group of the insurance scheme. Thank you from my side students. So, the, those are very important and very toughest top that, uh, the topic that is called employees deposit link insurance scheme. I would explain you the, um, the contribution of the employees and the employer, the form which has to be submitted and how to check your claim status. Thank you from my side.